Hello and welcome to the Bradford North Methodist Circuit and welcome to this time of worship. My name is Philip Drake and I am one of the ministers based here in the north of Bradford. I'm very glad to be joined today by members of the Stocks family from St Andrew's Church in Undercliff. Deborah is a gifted musician who sings, plays the piano and writes her own songs. Her husband Paul and son Callum will be reading the Bible passages for today. And so as we make ready to start our worship, we hear these words. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. The Spirit makes you God's children. And by the Spirit's power, we cry out to God, Abba, Father. We join in with or listen to the song, Sing of the Lord's Goodness. Let us open our hearts and lives to God in prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, we come to praise your name today. We are confident of your love for us, knowing that you want the very best for us and for our world. Help us to be a people strong in spirit and faithful to your call, so that the confidence you show in us may be shown to be well placed and encourage us to share in the work of Jesus that the good news of your saving grace may be a message of hope and rejoicing for all of creation and this we ask in Jesus name Amen and now I invite you to join with me in saying the Lord's Prayer Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen And now we listen to the Gospel reading, read by Callum Stocks. This reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24 to 30. The Parable of the Weeds Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man sowed good seed in his field. One night, when everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the plants grew and the ears of corn began to form, then the weeds showed up. The man's servants came to him and said, Sir, it was good seed you sowed in your field. Where did the weeds come from? It was some enemy who did this, he answered. Do you want us to go and pull up the weeds? They asked him. No, he answered, because as you gather the weeds, you might pull up some of the wheat along with them. Let the wheat and the weeds both grow together until harvest. Then I will tell the harvest workers to pull up the weeds first, tie them in bundles and burn them, and then to gather in the wheat and put it in my barn. Thanks be to God for his word. Some thoughts on the Gospel reading, waiting with patience. In the story that Jesus told, weeds and wheat are growing together. The response of the householder is to be contrasted with the response of the servants. Whilst the servants urge action without delay, the farmer counsels waiting and patience. The workers in the story were keen to uproot weeds and eager to make a difference. Sometimes we say, we're not doing enough, we could be doing more. But sometimes it's better to hang loose. To watch and wait, as the advice was given to me long ago to exercise a ministry of loitering without intent. We may or may not be called upon to act, and when we are, our efforts can make a difference. But we are always called to be faithful, to stick with God no matter what, to trust in his word and to wait on him. If you've ever moved house, and I can claim to have done my fair share, then you will know that it's not necessarily wise to tackle the garden at the first opportunity. Any keen gardener will tell you that you should wait for a year to see what happens. Who knows what hidden gem may emerge from the ground, which over-eager digging and clearing might otherwise have destroyed. Yes, waiting may prove to be messy, Certainly not an approach recommended by a garden makeover show, but it can have its own rewards. At the present time, as we come out of lockdown, we might find ourselves eager to take action. We want to return into our church buildings, to start up again where we left off. But the message of the parable is to take our time, to exercise patience, until the time is right. Living patiently means acting with the same long-suffering that God does. We may be eager to press on, but as Christians we are called to live in God's time and not our own, even if that means living with all the contradictions and tensions of this in-between time in which we find ourselves now. Here is something to think about. Look at this photograph with wild flowers growing amongst the crop. In the Bible story, the farmer lets the weeds and the wheat grow together for the sake of the harvest to come. To what extent are we prepared to share in that same sense of long suffering as we await the unfolding of God's kingdom? That's not to say we simply sit back and do nothing 
we wait with purpose. We are not being urged to adopt an attitude of resignation accompanied by a shrug of the shoulders. But waiting with patience is itself an action. First of all, waiting patiently with God means being watchful. The exercise of patience brings new opportunity. As we have journeyed through lockdown, we've already been encouraged as people of the church to try new ideas, developing different ways of working and means of keeping in touch. As we come out of lockdown, let's not lose sight of trying new things. Let's keep an eye out for opportunities as and when they arise and hold on to that willingness to try something new. Let's sow some seeds and see what comes of them. They might not all turn out as we expected. That's not necessarily a bad thing. There may be weeds among the wheat, but let's be like the farmer who said, let the wheat and the weeds grow together. To my mind, that's what ministry is all about. Stuff goes on. Some of it works out, some doesn't. Some things come good, some do not. Some are fruitful, others not so. With time we may be able to make a judgment on what has gone on, but only from the perspective of God's time can the final call be made. As well as waiting with watchfulness, we're also called to wait with hope. Listen to these words from Paul's letter to the Romans, as read to us by Paul Stocks. Reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 25. So then, my friends, we have an obligation, but it is not to live as our human nature wants us to. For if you live according to your human nature, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death your sinful actions, you will live. Those who are led by God's Spirit are God's children. For the Spirit that God has given you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the Spirit makes you God's children, and by the Spirit's power we cry out to God, Father, my Father. God's Spirit joins himself to our spirits to declare what we are God's children. Since we are his children, we will possess the blessings he keeps for his people, and we will also possess with Christ what God has kept for him. For if we share Christ's suffering, we will also share his glory. I consider that what we suffer at this present time cannot be compared at all with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. All of creation waits with eager longing for God to reveal his children. For creation was condemned to lose its purpose, not of its own will, but because God willed it to be so. Yet there was hope that creation itself would one day be set free from its slavery, to decay and would share the glorious freedom of the children of God. For we know that up to the present time, all creation groans with pain, like the pain of childbirth. But it is not creation alone which groans. We who have the Spirit, as the first of God's gifts, also groan within ourselves as we wait for God to make us children and set our whole being free. For it was by hope that we are were saved. But if we see what we hope for, then it is not really hope. For who of us hopes for something we see? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Thanks be to God for this reading. Amen. In this passage, St Paul speaks of the expectation which comes with sharing in the life of the Spirit. He longs for the time when creation will be restored to that fullness which is God's intention for the world. We can be aware of the amazing beauty of the world in which we live, and at the same time we can be aware also of its deep brokenness. And we can recognise the part played by human failing in the marring of a world that God made good. This sense of brokenness is nowhere more apparent than in the divisions that we allow to take hold in human relationships, between rich and poor, abled and disabled, and especially apparent at this time the division between black and white. 
but Paul's vision was of a world made one, held by the God whose love knows no division. Paul's appeal is that we are to wait expectantly for its coming with eager longing. In the 1950s and 60s, Martin Luther King lived by this longing for a better world, and he did not lose sight of this goal. The arc of history, he said, bends slowly, but it bends towards justice. In his book Belonging, Peter Selby highlights the connection between two ways of reading this title. God's purpose for the world is one of belonging, of a world that belongs as one to the God whose love knows no division. But Selby also examines his title as two words, and how to be longing is a necessary response to this promise that God has set before us. It is through our human yearning that God has chosen to work in revealing Jesus Christ to us as the means of redemption. If this current crisis of pandemic has instilled within us something more of this deep sense of yearning, not simply for a world we have lost, but for a world restored with a new and common purpose, then it is a vision worth committing ourselves to, so that glory might be given to the God to whom we all belong. As we reflect on this message, let's listen to Debbie Stocks as she sings one of her own compositions entitled To the One. Life with innocence 
Thank you, Debbie. As we lead into a time of prayer, take time to look at the seeds in this picture. Imagine holding them in your hand and how small as they are, they have the potential to grow and to be fruitful. A prayer to go with the picture. Lord God, thank you that you have planted good seed in my life. Thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit to guide me through all trials, giving me patience and hope in every situation. Amen. And we continue in prayer with our intercessions as we bring our concerns to God. Lord God, we pray for our world and for its people. So many different cultures, colours, languages, but we are all your children, each special in their own right. So whatever our gender, race, colour or creed, we all belong to you. We all need your love. We pray that we might learn to live in harmony with each other, to recognise that even someone halfway around the world is still our neighbour in your sight. Far or near, we all belong to you. We all need your love. With today's technology, we have access to news from afar, almost before it happens. Help us not to become blasé about the situations we see, but to pray and care faithfully for all concerned. In war or peace, we all belong to you. We all need your love. We pray for those near and dear to us. Protect them, wrap them in your loving arms, and in sorrow and in joy be with them. For near or far, we all belong to you. We all need your love. And we offer these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. We finish our time of worship together with the hymn, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy.
We look forward to meeting together again in our next service. But as we go our separate ways, we ask for God's blessing. May the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, be with you and all those whom you love, this day and forevermore. Amen.